Yo, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. Welcome to another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make the sub drop rack. It's available for download on the blog as usual, but this is what it sounds like in the context of a track. You're pretty standard, just sub bass drop into a breakdown or something like that, but it's right here where these yellow clips are. Let's listen and then we're going to go ahead and make it. Okay, so it sounds pretty good in the context of the track. This is what it sounds like by itself. And the rack has a lot of versatility without having to get into anything. It's got the decay time. It's got the slope of the decay. It's got the saturation drive, the saturation dry wet. The sub roll off, just in case you don't want it too subby. The high roll off, just in case you want to add a little bit more tone to the higher end or even decrease the higher end, the mids a little bit more. The compressor amount, which is just the um, multiband dynamics with the preset kind of more or less. And then there's the limiter gain on the end. But let's just go ahead and make it and see if we can't recreate this thing. First thing we're gonna need is operator. And I'm just gonna drop the default operator onto the channel. I can shut off all these other oscillators. I'm gonna be using this one. I'm gonna turn the course down to 0.5 and let's see what that sounds like now. So as you can hear, there is pretty much no sound, and that's because of where the MIDI clip is. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise that up for now. That sounds pretty good. Uh, we can leave the envelope the same. We can turn out, leave the LFO off. We can leave the filter off. We're gonna use an EQ8 at the end, and we're gonna just pretty much spend all our time in the pitch envelope here. I'm gonna take the transpose and drop it down negative 24. And that's where I'm gonna to have to move this MIDI note back down. So let's go ahead and adjust the envelope here. I'm gonna take the initial up to all the way up to 48, the peak all the way up to 48. And I'm gonna apply the pitch 100%. And the sustain, I'm gonna bring all the way down to negative 48 and also the end. You don't have to do the end, but just in case your MIDI note goes really long, you don't want it to like pitch back up a couple of octaves, you know what I mean? Great, and then we just have to adjust the decay time. So now we got the sense of what the pitch envelope is doing. Let's go ahead and drop that mini note back down to a G0. Cool. And that's pretty much all we have to do inside of Operator. So I'm gonna right click and group it to the instrument rack. I'm gonna click this button to show my macros. I'm gonna go ahead and take the decay time and map to macro two, and then increase it just so we have it again. Right next to the attack, there's this little square. If you hit that, you get the slope. And we're gonna go ahead and map the D slope to macro one. And you can see that now we can adjust the slope of the decay, which is also pretty sweet. And it adds a lot of versatility to really hone in on exactly what you need for your track. So that sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and add some effects now. I'm gonna do an EQ8 right here. I'm gonna turn the low pass or the low cut on the filter one. I'm gonna put the frequency on the macro five. I can turn off these other ones and I'm just gonna do the high cut and again, map the frequency to macro six and then adjust that. And the reason why I'm doing this is just because usually you're gonna be layering that sub drop with a lot of other sounds and it's really just a good idea not to be interfering with that higher end if you don't need to be. And also if you wanna roll off a bit of that ultra sub, you can do that real easily as well from the macro knobs. Next thing I'm gonna do is add a multiband dynamics and I'm gonna use restore punch, drop that on there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is put on the saturator. I'm gonna put on the bit a bit warmer and I'm going to map the macro, the drive to macro 3 and the dry wet to macro 4 and I'm going to dry, turn the dry wet all the way up. So as you can hear 
together with that multiband dynamics and that saturator, things sound really nice. And the last thing we can do, just as a safety precaution, and something that I always do on my racks usually, is put a limiter on the end, just in case, and I can map that macro, uh, the, the gain to macro eight, and then turn that back up to zero. That's pretty cool. And the last thing I can do if I really want to fill up all those is uh, if I really want to fill up all those macro knobs is map the amount of the compressor to macro seven, just so I never have to come back into the rack if I don't really have to. Um, one last housekeeping thing we can do here is hit this map mode button because on the Decay time here, any short decay really doesn't sound good. So if I have a 70, 789 milliseconds, it doesn't really sound good. So I think around like three seconds, anything below three seconds isn't really necessary for a sub bass drop box. So what I'm gonna do is come into the map mode and go into the peak decay. If I, okay, see if you come in and click on the parameter, it'll highlight where it is up here, just in case you don't wanna go through and read them if you've got a lot. But I'm gonna just go ahead and turn this up to about three seconds. And that way I don't have to really worry about ever tweaking that knob and having a, a bad sound. But that sounds pretty good. So let's see if the recreation sounds just as good uh, with the track. There you go, that's how you make the sub bass drop rack or the sub bass drop box. That alliteration really makes the title pop. Anyway, I hope you learned something. Great subscribe, comment, we'll see you next time. Peace.